اسمها Electrocardiographic Features by Dr. Halabud Abu Mandur, Lecture of Cardiology at the Unit Cardiology Department, Legacy University. Uh, in every electrocardiogram, we have nine features that should be examined systematically. We must talk about uh, rate and regularity, T wave morphology, PR interval, QRS complex morphology, AC segment morphology, T wave morphology, U wave morphology, Q QTC interval, and rhythm. Usually, the heart rate, regularity, and rhythm are commonly grouped together. First, we will talk about the, um, the ECG paper. This is an example of an ECG paper. It's composed of a vertical, uh, vertical line and horizontal line. Uh, vertical line measured the voltage in milli um, volt and um, uh, uh, horizontal line measured the time by milliseconds. We have small square and large square. Small square has one millimeter uh, length and one millimeter width. Uh, the widths equal 0.04 uh, from seconds or uh, 14 milliseconds. And the uh, the height is uh, one millimeter uh, meter uh, equal 0.1 millivolt. Um, uh, of course, the uh, the larger square uh, it contains five small square, so it is 0.2 seconds or 200 milliseconds, and uh, 0.5 uh, millivolt. Uh, this is a description about our uh, ECG uh, paper. Uh, first, at any ECG paper, we must look at the calibration. Uh, this calibration must be one uh, millimeter or ten millimeter high. This is the reference or standard calibration. If I want it half or more than this, I will show it in the ECG paper. It must be first thing to be looked at your ECG paper. Look at the cal calibration to determine the uh, normal voltage of the U of the waves you will get in this ECG. Uh, first topic of our um, um, of our talk will be about rate and regularity. Uh, the cardiac rhythm is rarely precisely regular, even when electrical activity is initiated normally in the sinus node. The, rate rate, the heart rate is affected by autonomic nervous system, as the AC node is, has uh, uh, autonomic uh, balance or autonomic supply, sympathetic and parasympathetic nerve uh, supply. So there may be slight abnormalities in the uh, normal sinus rhythm. Normally, there are equal P wave and QRS morphology. Each QRS wave will be preceded by P wave. Uh, if there is an uh, essential regularly in cardiac rate, cardiac rate can be easily determined by counting the number of large squares between cycles because each square indicates one fifth of a second. So uh, we have 300 fifths in a second. This, uh, this, uh, this, um, um, this number comes from multiplying 5 by 60. And when we want to know the rate in the, in the regular strip ECG, uh, we must divide 300 by numbers of big uh, squares between or large squares between consecutive cardiac cycles. We'll describe it uh, in detail in uh, our paper how we count the heart rate. We have a small square, the, 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 the large square in the ECG uh, uh, measured 0.2 from second. So every five square will, uh, will give me one second. Uh, I want the heart rate in one minute, so I, I must have it in 60 seconds. Five plus uh, multiplied by 60, this will give us 300. So how can we count the heart rate? We divide 300 uh, by the numbers of big squares between two consecutive R if I want to get the ventricular rate or two consecutive D waves if I want to get uh, the uh, atrial heart rate. In this example we have a strip of ECG. Uh, here we have four big squares between consecutive R so the heart rate, the ventricular rate will be 300 divided by 4 so it is 75 uh, uh, peak per minute. Uh, because there are five uh, small squares, as we uh, mentioned, in each large square, I can measure the heart rate by small squares. Uh, but here I will divide 1,500 1, uh, as a number by uh, all small divided by uh, all small square between two consecutive R in this uh, ECG strips. Uh, we usually use this when we have a, a heart rate a tachycardia when the heart rate of the patient exceeds uh, one peat, 100 feet per minute. So I will measure the heart rate by using small square. 
but if the heart rate is irregular, how can I measure uh, the, uh, the if the rhythm is irregular? How can I measure the heart rate? A simple quick method for estimating cardiac rate is to count the number of cardiac cycle in six seconds and to multiply this number by ten as six divided uh, six uh, multiplied by ten will uh, give us sixty seconds, which is one uh, minute. Uh, here is another strip of regular ECG rhythm. I want to, to see the heart rate or the ventricular rate. Uh, here I have uh, three big squares between the two consecutive R, so I, I will count the heart rate by multiplying 300 over 3. So the heart rate here is, feet, is 100 uh, feats per minute. Another example, but here uh, the heart rate is uh, completely irregular. As you see, this is, the, this is a long cardiac cycle and this is a short cardiac cycle. So here I can't use the rule of 300 or 100 uh, or 1500 uh, rule. I will count the number of cardiac cycle or the QRTS complexes which is present in 6 uh, minutes and multi uh, seconds and multiply this number by 10 uh, to get the heart rate per minute. Here uh, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 QRS complexes. So 6 divided, uh, 6 multiplied by 10, so the heart rate here in this patient is 60 uh, feet per minute. Uh, how many large boxes are there in 6 second strip? Of course, we have uh, 30 uh, large square. Uh, as the large square is 0.2, so it's 1 uh, fifth of a second, so uh, 60 uh, 6 seconds will, uh, will be found in. 330 uh, uh, big square. So I count strip in ECG uh, thir 30 big square and uh, see how QRS complexes are present in this strip and multiply the number of QRS complexes by 10. This will give me the actual heart rate uh, in uh, regular rhythm. Uh, these are examples when I see uh, if the heart rate is regular. When I see uh, one uh, big square, so the heart rate will be 3,300, and 300 divided by 1 is 300. If two large squares, so 300 divided by 2 is 150 feet per minute, and uh, so uh, and so on. Cardiac rate and regularity. Uh, this is the second step I must, I must be measured and uh, as I said before, when I look to the ECG, I must be in a systemic way, look to, to uh, the heart rate and the rhythm uh, uh, or irregularity and this all are one uh, together, grouped together as one item. The normal cardiac rhythm is called sinus rhythm and it's normally uh, from six, 60 to 100 feet per minute. Uh, sinus bradycardia with a rate low, uh, as low as four, 40 feet per minute may be normal during sleep. And sinus tachycardia with a rate rapid at 200 feet per minute may be uh, seen normally during exercise. Uh, sinus rate in bradycardic range may occur normally during uh, wakefulness, especially in well-trained athletes with resting heart rate usually ranging from three uh, from 30 to uh, below 60 feet per minute with moderate exertion and this is normal finding in uh, acidies. As we mentioned before, sinus node has autonomic nervous system supply, so there is some irregularity, especially with respiration. Sinus rate accelerates with inspiration and slows with expiration. Uh, let's us talk about the wave of uh, ACG. In the first uh, um, lecture of this course, we discuss uh, what, uh, P, T, and, Q and QRS waves. Uh, here we will talk about these waves in details. We will talk about general contour, duration, positive and neg negative amplitudes, and axis in the frontal and transverse planes. As a general rule, when the activity is toward the lead from which I record this activity, uh, this will give uh, me a positive deflection in the ECG. If it's away from the recording electrode, uh, it will be a negative deflection. But if it is coming to this electrode and then pass away from this electrode, like this example, I will have a positive uh, deflection, then a negative deflection. Uh, let us talk about P-wave morphology. Uh, first, we will talk about general control P wave, usually normally smooth, rounded waves. Uh, um, it's either entirely positive or entirely negative, which is monophasic or maybe uh, biphasic, and this is not seen normally in V1 and possibly V2. 
In the short axis view provided uh, by lead V1, which uh, best distinguish left versus right sided cardiac activity, while lead 2 is the long axis lead. So normally in lead 2 I will show which is long axis lead, uh, the P wave will be rounded and positive and V1 will be biphasic first portion represent right atrial activity which is come towards the, that, this recording site which is V1 so it is positive and lift uh, atrium activity which is away from V1 so it will be negative so uh, P and V1 will be biphasic first position is positive first and the last portion is negative. What about the P-wave duration? The P-wave duration is normally uh, less than 0.12 seconds, positive and negative amplitudes. The maximum P-wave amplitude is normally no more than 0.2 millivolt in the frontal plane leads, uh, uh, and no more than 0.1 uh, millivolt uh, 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 most, um, no, it's, um, we talk about the amplitude, so we talk about millivolt, uh, so we talk about a small square, not large square. The maximum P wave amplitude is normally no more than 0.2 millivolt in the frontal plane leads and no more than 0.1 millivolt in the transverse plane leads. Uh, what is the axis in the frontal and the transverse plane? The P wave normally appears entirely upright, the one applicated in the left and the inferiorly oriented leads, the F lead 1, 2, and the EVF, the inferior leads. We uh, V4 and V6 and negatively in AVR because uh, AVR um, orientation is in the right shoulder so all the cardiac activity will be away from the AVR so all cardiac waves, PQRS T waves will be negative in normally negative in AVR lead. Here is the normal uh, P wave morphology it's upright in uh, lead 1, it's negative in AVR, uh, it's positive in inferior leads. 2, 3, and AVF, and also positive in V5 uh, and 6. Other leads may be uh, biphasic, especially V1 and V2. How about the axis of the P wave? In the frontal plane, axis of P wave was discussed uh, when we talk about the morphology. It's normally uh, from, one uh, from positive 30 to uh, positive 75 degrees. Uh, alteration in this axis uh, may indicate the cardiac rhythm uh, is being uh, initiated from site low in the right atrium or the AV node or the left atrium but not from the SA node. Uh, another item we will discuss in this lecture is the PR interval. PR interval measures the time required from an electrical impulse to travel from the atrium adjacent to the sinoatrial node to the ventricular myocardium adjacent to the fiber of the Kinshin network. The duration is normally 0.21 to 0.2 seconds. A measured portion of PR interval reflects the, the slow conduction of an impulse through the atrioventricular node, which is controlled by a balance between sympathetic and parasympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system. Therefore, the PR interval varies uh, with heart rate, being shorter at faster rates with the sympathetic components and vice versa. The PR interval tends to increase with age. In a childhood, the normal range of PR 0.1 to 0.12 seconds. In adolescence, 0.12 to 0.16. In adulthood, from 0.14 to 0.21 seconds. Uh, the QRS morphology. Also, we will talk about general contour, uh, voltage or amplitude, the axis, uh, F of the QRS. Uh, we talk about the P wave which is rounded in shape, smooth up and down deflection. QRS is not like this. QRS complex component uh, is composed of higher frequency signals that are uh, than the P or the T wave because uh, so it is uh, peaked rather than rounded wave. Uh, as from this name we have Q wave, we will talk about Q wave separately R wave and S wave. Q, Q wave. In some leads like V1, 2, and 3, the presence of any Q wave should be considered abnormal. So normally there is no Q wave in the V1 to V2 and V3 uh, chest leads. Whereas all other leads except right oriented leads which are V3 and AVR, a normal Q wave is very small. 
uh, the absence of Q wave in lead V5 and 6 should be considered abnormal. So it's normal. I normally must found a Q wave in V6 and V5, and uh, I there, is, there must be no Q wave in V1, V2, and 3 and V3. A Q wave of any size uh, is normal in the leads 3 and AVR. Don't look actually at leads 3 or AVR. There may be a Q wave small or large, and this is uh, due to their upright, uh, their rightward orientation. So I will not talk about Q wave in lead 3 or in AVR uh, lead. Q wave may be enlarged by conditions um, as local loss of myocardial tissue, which is myocardial function, or chamber enlargement or hypertrophy. Of the, vent of the ventricular or by ventricular conduction abnormalities. These are uh, the key wave, uh, the key wave uh, limits. Uh, if I found it normally, like in V5 and V6, must be below 0.03. Uh, uh, what about our wave? Because the pericardium needs provide a panoramic view of the cardiac electrical activity progressing from the thinner right ventricle across to the thicker left ventricle. The positive R wave normally increase in amplitude and duration from lead V1 uh, to lead V4 and 6. So normally I must see a small V, a small R in V1 and uh, it's, um, uh, it will be progressed till reaching V4 or V6 or V5. But V6 is uh, more laterally uh, oriented lead, so the R may be uh, may in lead 6 may be uh, smaller than V5. Reversal cell of these sequences with larger R wave in leads V1 and 2 may be produced by right ventricular hypertrophy, and this will be discussed in a separate lecture. And the accentuation of this sequence will, with large R in, in leads V5 and V6 can be produced by left ventricular hypertrophy. Loss of normal R wave progression from V1 to V4 may indicate loss of ventricular myocardium, as we discussed in case of myocardial infarction, and in, uh, I will see Q instead of R wave. This is a normal sequence of R wave, small r in V1, increasing in size to reach V4 or V5, then smaller in V6. Uh, 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 this is also the uh, normal QRS morphology. Normally, uh, QRS morphology, QRS must be negative in AVR, as we, share, as we said before, because AVR is a right word oriented lead, or the cardiac electric activity is away from the AVR, so all waves P, Q, or S, and T will be negative in AVR. And uh, normally the biphasic position of the QR is complex, usually at uh, V3. Uh, uh, at this uh, level, I found uh, the R is mostly uh, equal to the S wave uh, in amplitude. Oh, shall we talk about the uh, S wave? Yes, the S wave also has a normal sequence of progression. In the pericardial leads, it should be larger, large in V1, larger in V2, and then progressively smaller from V3 uh, throughout V6. As the R wave, the sequence could be altered also by hypertrophy, ventricular hypertrophy, or myocardial uh, infarction. What about the QRS generation, the normal value? The duration of QRS complex is determined in the QR interval and is normally larger uh, ranges from 0.07 to 0.11 seconds. The duration of the QRS complex tends to be slightly longer in male than in females. Actually, all the QRS waves of the turtle must um, normally know uh, longer in male than in female except the uh, corrected QRT, uh, QT interval. We will discuss later in this lecture. The QRS complex interval is measured from the beginning of the first appearing of Q wave uh, or R to the end of the last appearing, either it is R wave, S wave, R dash or S dash wave. Uh, there is an isoelectric period of approximately 0.02 seconds. Uh, it appears in lead 2 at the beginning of the QRS complex. And at the end of the fleet 3, there may be 0.01 seconds of also isoelectric life. Uh, not only uh, note that the only lead uh, revealed is lead 1 reveals the true QRS complex. So the, the only QRS complex duration uh, must reveal in lead 1. So when I talk about QRS duration, just look at lead 1, where, uh, so, uh, and it's normally uh, up to 0 0.1 to uh, 0 0.12 seconds. 
uh, we should also know another uh, definition which is an intrinsic deflection what is an uh, what is the intrinsic deflection the duration from the beginning of the earliest appearing of the QRS morphology uh, by either Q or R waves to the peak of the R wave in several or, uh, of the bicardial leads. This is termed the intrinsic deflection, and we see in uh, the intrinsic deflection in this example uh, from the beginning of the QRS, so from the beginning appearing of the Q wave here to the peak of the R wave. If I have a pattern like R R dash pattern. Uh, I will talk to the peak of the R dash or the biggest R in uh, the ECG. Positive and the negative uh, amplitude of the QRS complex. Over QR QRS complex is measured between the peaks of the tallest positive and uh, negative waveform in this complex. The amplitude of overall QRS complex has wide normal limits. It varies with age increasing until about age of 30. Uh, years old and then gradually decreases. The amplitude is generally larger in male than in female as we discussed before. It's difficult to set an arbitrary, an arbitrary upper limit of normal voltage QRS complex peak to peak amplitude as to uh, high as 4 millivolt may be seen in normal individuals. An abnormal low voltage QRS, uh, QRS amplitude occurs when the overall amplitude is no more than 0.5 millivolt in any of the lamp leads and no more than uh, 1 millivolt in any of the pre-recorded leads. Uh, let us talk about the axis of the, uh, of the uh, QRS uh, morphology. We must talk about the axis in the frontal and in the transverse plane, uh, which is most important, it is the frontal plane. Yeah, it, it has more uh, pathological values in some disease. The QRS axis uh, represents what is the QRS axis? QRS axis represents the average direction of the total force produced by right and left ventricular depolarization. Although the Purkinje network facilitates the spread of depolarization waveform from the apex to the base or to the base of the ventricle, the QRS axis is normally in the positive direction in the frontal uh, plane leads, except in AVR because of the endocardial to epicardial split of depolarization in thicker and uh, walled left ventricle. Uh, because I have a um, short set of impulse from the endocardium to the epicardium in the thick left ventricle, so the overall um, uh, axis or the electrical activity direction will be in this plane. Uh, if you talk about the frontal plane, so I will talk about the limb leads. If we talk about the transverse plane, I will talk about the pericordial or chest leads. In the frontal plane, the full uh, 360 degree circumference of the hexaxial reference system is provided by the positive and negative poles of the six limb leads. In the transverse plane, it is provided by positive and negative poles in the six pericordial uh, leads, as I said before. This is the hexaxial reference system. Uh, this is our the limb leads. Uh, if our AVL is about uh, minus 3 degree, uh, lead 1 at 0, lead 2 at 60, positive 60, uh, AVF positive 90, lead 3 positive 120, and if you are uh, minus 150. Uh, this is our the normal orientation of the limb leads, which uh, we'll talk about the frontal axis of the ECG and the hexaxial reference uh, system. Uh, normally, the axis of the QRS uh, from minus 30 to 110, positive 110. If from minus 30 to minus 90, it's left axis deviation. From uh, 110 to 180, it's right axis deviation. And here we have extreme right axis deviation or no man's land area, which is important in diagnosis of emphysema, hyperkalemia, lead, uh, transposition, ventricular pacing, and ventricular arrhythmias. Uh, when the uh, classical frontal plane ECG display is used, a three step method is required for determining the overall axis of QRS. Mm -hmm. yani the frontal axis of QRS First, I will identify the transitional lead. The transitional lead, the lead perpendicular to the waveform axis, by locating the lead in which the QRS complex has most nearly equal positive and negative components. يعني أبص على اللمب ليد فأشوف أكتر ليد في ال R and ال S أو ال positive and negative تقريبا حددت الليد ده 
I will uh, go to the hex axial reference and identify uh, the lead that is oriented perpendicular to this to this lead. آخر step خالص هبص على the perpendicular lead ده وبص على the positive direction بتاعه أنهي أقوى the positive ولا أنهي أكبر يعني the positive ولا the negative. Uh, هن consider the prominent direction of the QRS complex lead identified for step two. If the direction is positive, the axis is the same positive pole of that lead. If the direction is negative, the axis will be the same negative lead of that. The example, uh, هنشوف فيه هنحسب the axis, the cardiac axis بتاع the QRS axis في frontal plane. أول حاجة frontal يبقى نبص على limb leads. أول ما لقي transition lead nearly transitional هنا عند V lead one. The R تقريبا قد the S lead one. هبص على الهكس اكس ليد هلاقي ليد 1 العمود عليه ايه هو الاي في اف هبص على طول هروح على الاي في اف اشوف اخبارها ايه لقيت الاي في اف البوزيتيف بول بتاعها اكبر بكتير من النيجاتيف يبقى الكارديك كيو ار اس اكسس في اتجاه البوزيتيف بول بتاع الاي في اف يبقى الاكسس هيبقى عند ديجري 90 ديجري ده الكارديك اكسس اكسس اورينتيشن اوف ذا كيو ار اس اكسس ذا فرونت بلين ويتش از نورمالي طيب ده اكزامبل تاني نفس الستبس همشي في الثلاث خطوات هبص الاول على ليد اللي فيه ترانزيشن زون هنا ليد 2 هو اللي فيه تقريبا الار اد الاس هاجي هبص سكند ستيب ابص على الاكس الهكس اجيا الهكس اجزيا ريفرنس سيستم ادي ليد 2 العمود عليها ايه العمود عليها هو الاي في ال طيب هبص على الاي في ال على طول في الستريب اللي عندي لقيت الاي في ال بوزيتيف يبقى ده الليمب البوزيتيف يبقى الاكسس عند سالب 30 درجه تقريبا فيري سامبل تو ايدنتيفاي اند اولسو اكوريت ميثود I have I have a quick method. Yes, I have quick method of estimation of the axis deviation. Look at lead one and AVF. If lead one is positive, is positive, and AVF is positive, we have normal axis deviation. If the at the 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 other direction poles are negative, we have extreme right axis deviation. If we have lead one positive and AVF negative, it's left axis deviation. Lead one negative and if positive, it's right axis deviation. This is rough, but quick method to estimate the axis of QRS in the frontal plane. These are some normal values of the QRS axis in the transverse plane. Here, I will here will talk. I will see the transverse. I will will look at the bi coordinate. The transverse plane shows the anterior to posterior movement of the axis. Which is not visible in the frontal plane. In adults, the, the, the transition that lead is usually V3 or V4. The more nabikeda normally for QRS transition and V3 are more V4. And the leads oriented perpendicular to lead V3 to V4, um, lead V5, V6 and V1, respectively. طبعا. طيب يبقى العمود على V3 أو V أو V4 هما V1 و V6. Because the normal predominance of direction of the QRS complex axis for lead theta, for lead one, they are on V1. The QRS, the the axis of QRS complex in the transverse plane in the other is typically between zero and minus sixty. Then normally, for V1, I have a small R with deep S, and V6, I have a small Q with tall R with smaller. For normally, for transverse axis from zero. The minus 60 del transverse axis will represent the anterior and posterior movement, as we said. The places where the leads are located, of course, this is discussed in the first lecture. I saw the other item, which is the ST segment. Morphology of the ST segment. The ST segment represents the period during which the ventricular myocardium proceeds through the preliminary two phases of repolarization, which is phase one, which is this, and phase two. الفيز 1 والفيز 2 ده ده المكان اللي بريزنت بي سي سيجمنت في الاي سي جي. As a junction with the QRS complex من نهاية ال QRS وبداية الاي سي سيجمنت بلاقي ال J point ودي مهمة خالص في some diseases لما هنتدسكس بعد كده في المحاضرات اللي بعد كده زي في المايكرال انفكشن. The first section of the segment is normally located at the same horizontal level as the baseline. Formed by the TP segment. The baseline of the line is on the T line from the TP segment. From the end of the T to the beginning of the T. That is the baseline. The first part of the QRS has to be isoelectric, meaning it is moving at the same level as the TP line. Normal variant of this segment appears when there is altered early repolarization. It is normal. It is normal. It is 
normal variant اللي هو benign early depolarization pattern within the ventricle. This causes displacement of its segments uh, by uh, as much as 0.1 millivolt, uh, millivolt in the direction of the uh, ensuring T wave. Occasionally, its segment uh, in young males may show even greater elevation fleet uh, and V2 and V3. This is uh, ECG uh, showing us the uh, early uh, repolarization uh, pattern, how it looks here in this uh, part. Okay. <coughs> what about the T wave morphology? General control T wave like P wave. Post the shape and axis uh, like P wave in the shape. It's uh, uh, rounded and smooth, not sharp. Uh, general control both the shape and axis of normal T wave resemble those of the P wave. The waveform in both cases are smooth and rounded and are positively directed in all lots except, as we said before, AVR. Where they are negative and in V1 where they may be uh, biphasic. T wave duration, the duration of T wave itself is not usually measured, uh, but الأهم منها طبعا الـ QT interval هنتكلم فيها بعد كده وحاليا الأهم منها كمان هو الـ corrective QT interval and we'll, we'll, we will talk about these items in, in, in a separate slide. Positive and negative amplitude, the amplitude of T wave like that of the QRS complex has wide normal limits. T wave don't normally exceed 0.5 millivolt in any of the limb leads and uh, 1.5 uh, millivolt in any of the recorded leads يعني مش هتعدي مربع كبير في الليمب ليدز ومش هتعدي ثلاث مربعات كبار في الريكوردد ليدز what's about the, uh, the direction or the axis they will follow the direction of the QRS uh, deflection so the axis of the T wave should be evaluated in relation to that of the QRS uh, axis um, small entity which is a U wave what's U wave? U wave is normally either absent from the ECG or present as a small as rounded wave followed the T wave it's normally oriented in the same direction as the T wave uh, and had approximately 10% of amplitude of that T wave and is usually most prominent in leads V2 and V3 uh, the source of uh, U wave is actually uncertain and there is theories explain the presence of U wave in some ECG uh, the, the origin may be due to uh, tardy repolarization of the subendocardial Purkinje fibers or prolonged repolarization of the mid uh, myocardium M cells uh, and maybe due to after potentials resulting from mechanical forces in the ventricular uh, wall. This is the shape of U wave, small wave coming uh, after T wave. Can't see it or can't see it, may be present or absent. If uh, I can see, uh, it's normally uh, present in V2 and V3. QT interval, or better to say corrected QT interval, QTC interval. The QT interval measured the duration of electrical activation and the recovery of the ventricular myocardium. The QT interval varies inversely with the cardiac rate. Uh, the corrected QT interval, rather than the myocardial QT interval, is included in routine ECG analysis. So what is the uh, corrected QT interval? How can I measure it? I divided the QT interval, the actual QT interval, by the RR distance. The upper limit of the QT interval duration is approximately 0.46 seconds or 460 milliseconds. The QTC interval is slightly longer in adult female uh, than in adult men. This is the only uh, value which is longer, slightly longer in female than in males in uh, ECG. This is the reference of uh, our lecture. Thank you.